So you may have come across this video of what appears to be a 15 year old kid arguing with OF girls. He appears to be very intelligent, has some sort of accent, and is against OF. I'm saying OF because YouTube might not put ads on this video if I say only and with nothing in between, I say fans. We have no idea what the context of this video is, what show this is, what led up to it, why this kid is there in the first place, but he definitely embarrassed this woman. Be sitting talk to a, talking to a bunch of illiterate people who don't know how to read, but uh, you're you know, literally 15. What do you know? Oh. You know how to read. Yes, I do know how to read. Name 10 books. Are you serious? Yes, oh, 100%. Shit. Name 10 books. Well, I read Game of Thrones. I'm obsessed with like the Twilight the series. Called? Game of Thrones, the don't series? What's, what's the book well, called? It's not helper. called Game of Thrones. Wait, wait, what book did you just say before that? She's just uh, trying to come up with a bunch of nonsense and she can't name any That's actual books. Talk, bro, bro shut you, up, kid. Do you, do you think you're smarter than these girls? That's why you interrupt them? You know, I, I don't really think that, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, they've earned uh, my respect to speak. Listen, I think right, we're kind of okay. getting off topic. Can you name 10 books? <laughs> can you? I, I just can said you, I, no, don't, don't change. No, 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 no. You're, change, books. you're uh, changing the subject, actually. First. 10 books. You're changing the subject, okay, three actually. Three books. Three books. Three. Okay. Well, the Game of Thrones series, not a book. Twilight I want, series. I want the name it of the is book. a book. It is I want, a book. No, but I want the name you of the know book. What? I'll Google the book right now. Okay, the, the book is called uh, Song of Ice and Fire now before you embarrass yourself by by looking up the name of a book. She couldn't even actually name a single book. She doesn't know how to read. She's clearly illiterate. Name 10 books. She couldn't even name one. She's like, Game of Thrones? That's a book, right? I can prove it. But obviously, she's never read it. This kid actually knows the name of the book, and that's crazy. And not to defend this woman, but at least 50% of the people watching this video probably can't name 10 books. Let's see if I can do it. We got The Bible, Mein Kampf, The Art of the Deal, Fatherhood by Bill Cosby, Where's Waldo, Good Burger, The Novelization, The Night Dad Went to Jail, Where's My Dad, Trans Harry Potter. I can't name any more. These are just the books we had to read for school. Most people just don't read recreationally. And to be honest, the only time I read paperback books are when I'm on an airplane. And that's because those things don't have Wi-Fi. But the point this kid's trying to make is that these women are uneducated. They do sex work because they're not qualified to do anything else. And what they're doing is potentially bad for society. And for those who don't know, every time you pound off, your brain releases a protein called prolactin, which is the same protein that causes women to produce breast milk. For men, a little bit of prolactin will just have you feeling relaxed, but eventually it lowers your testosterone, it makes it harder to get an erection, some guys can't even get it up for a girl because they pound it off a few times earlier that day. It's all because of the prolactin. Pounding off also increases your dopamine levels temporarily. Dopamine is what makes you feel happy. Your brain releases dopamine to reward you for things like eating, finishing something, accomplishing something like getting home from work. If you're just producing dopamine just from pounding off, you might have less of a drive to actually accomplish things. You feel rewarded for no reason. It's like doing drugs pretty much. And this is why people are against OnlyFans and corn addiction. Now this video went viral, getting over 20 million views, but it was hard to locate the actual full interview at first. The comments were asking, who is this kid? And eventually the full interview went viral too, with the top comments saying, you know society is crumbling when you could put a child in the same room with several adults to have a conversation and you end up laughing at the adults. And this had 16,000 thumbs up up well first of all that's probably a good sign for society if children are smarter than adults that means the future will be an improvement second thing this kid isn't that much younger than the girls that he's arguing with he's 15 and they're 19 and the third thing is these girls do corn they're not supposed to be intelligent it's not a requirement for the job they have and yes the 10 books thing became a meme can you name 10 books no, one book, three books, ten books. I'm on the phone. I know. Can you name ten books though? That's all I'm asking. I'm one, on the phone. One book. Doctor Seuss. Name a Doctor Seuss book. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. No, he's got a point. He is on the phone. 
Just like one, one book. I, book. I know, that's what I'm asking though. It's just one book. Please. Now the first time this kid went viral was three years ago. He was at a Clippers game on the Jumbotron for the dance cam. And while on TV, he held up a t-shirt that said, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. As soon as he did that, the camera panned away awkwardly and many people in the crowd were excited and shocked. And I'll tell you why. It's because China is invading Hong Kong. These are two separate countries, two separate governments, two separate cultures. It'd be like if the US decided to snatch Jamaica. And the people in Hong Kong are very upset about this. They don't want to be a part of China. Hong Kong uses Hong Kong dollar. Mainland China uses the Chinese Yuan. And here in Hong Kong, I can use apps like YouTube and Facebook, but not so much in mainland China. Where those apps are banned, Hong Kong locals have extra freedoms, open internet, free speech. It's been a source of pride for the 7 million people of Hong Kong. Now, why would the NBA pan away from a kid showing support for Hong Kong? It's because China is a huge market for the NBA. In 2019, a team official for the Houston Rockets showed support for Hong Kong and China stopped showing their games for 15 months. The GM who made those comments had to step down. The Rockets lost tons of money. They went from being one of the more valuable, better teams in the NBA to being one of the worst in just over a year. If you trash talk about China, you're gonna lose money, even though they're committing a genocide, using slavery, invading countries. All of these things we pretend to care about, just pretend this happened in America a hundred years ago, and maybe people will actually give a shit. I'm getting sidetracked, but yes, Matan is the MVP for doing this. The NBA has chosen money over morals, and this 12-year-old kid exposed that. After this, he was interviewed by several news websites, including Infowars. Then why did you have a t-shirt that says Free Hong Kong underneath the Clippers t-shirt? Um, so I had heard a little about the movement and what was happening in Hong Kong. So uh, I had heard it about the movement before the Clipper game, and I decided that, you know, I should try to do something. And I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. So it was kind of a... Uh, Yes, in the moment, but I saw people handing out the shirts at the Clipper game outside. So when I saw that, I decided, you know, maybe I should hold it up, get on the screen, be on live TV. And I thought that, you know, doing that could really make a make a mark because I knew that uh, if it was on live TV, since it was, you know, what could be one of the biggest games of the season, uh, you know, a lot of people would see it, especially if it was on live TV. And it would bring a lot of attraction to the movement, which is uh, what I think it did. <laughs> Now the elephant in the room is that he doesn't have a thick Middle Eastern accent, like the way he talks now, you would assume English is his second language, he comes from some kind of conservative culture, but it turns out that English is actually his first language, he also knows how to speak Hebrew because his family is from Israel, probably of Sephardic ancestry. The fake accent, his Not hair, fake. I've seen videos of you speaking without the accent, dog. Right, but the videos are three or, uh, three years old, so obviously my accent will develop over time for one, and you know for two, you cannot tell me that I've not been training this accent you know for over two weeks now to perfect it to the point where you know you sound like somebody just hit you in the head with a hammer, and I sound like a professional ready to talk. So his accent and persona is likely just him imitating one of his uncles or something. He's a troll, and him and Macy could probably be best friends. He would have another viral moment at BlizzCon where he started chanting, Free Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> um, so anyway, the, uh, the identity of the mysterious jailer being unknown and somewhat a new figure in Warcraft Low, uh, is there a possibility that there could be a character we know is connected? You got, got a question, mate? Yeah. Free Hong Kong! It was, was pretty viral. I uh, did a little bait and switch with a t-shirt at a Clippers game and you know it, it went pretty big. The next month I did another stunt. It wasn't as big but it was also pretty big. I was at another gaming convention, BlizzCon, mm. and uh, you know I walked up when they were talking. I interrupted and you know I said uh, that my message was to free Hong Kong. They said thank you. And then I moved on. Not For years, he would make activism videos on YouTube where he talked about Hong Kong and how corrupt China is. Supposedly, he talked a lot about human rights in general. And over time, he just stopped making videos and lost interest. But it was on December 8th, 2022, when he would go viral again during the Game Awards where he snuck on stage. 
Now, nobody is questioning why he's up there. There aren't security guards rushing to pull him off. The guy accepting the award probably assumed he worked for the show. The security probably assumed that he had some affiliation with the award winners. Thank you so much. Create the games we want to create and do our best because of you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Martin. You know, real quick, I want to thank everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my Reformed Orthodox Rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. Now this is just great. When he speaks into the microphone just to speak gibberish, people start clapping anyway, which proves that if you speak with confidence, the average person won't question what you're saying. Matan would get arrested and banned from the Game Awards, and this gave him a name which he built on by making videos like this. Once ago, I was working on one of my projects, which you now know today as Blockbuster. One company that actually offered to buy and invest in it was actually Amazon, which led me to speak to Jeff Bezos in the flesh. Amazon's offer in the end was close to a billion dollars, but I ended up declining it without any hesitation at all. I knew that if I sold, the company would be handed over to a team of responsible, charismatic and experienced people. However, as I predicted, as soon as the company went public under my leadership, it went down immediately and now the company is in bankruptcy. It's interesting that he knows what Blockbuster is and while we're at it, Bill Clinton too. This kid must be a fan of 90s culture. And Matan continues to fight for publicity as he sometimes trolls random people like JaVale McGee. What's the dude here? Who think I don't know what he do on the internet and shit? Reaction or some shit. I don't know what he trying to do. He just on some weird shit. It's, we grown men around here. We grew up before just social media age shit. You know what I'm saying? So, this shit don't phase us. We didn't have real, we didn't have real one step to us and we really had to put shit down. You know what I'm saying? So, it's cool. Well, he's, it's gonna be on one of the shit. It's gonna be on something. So when y'all see it, so when y'all see it, just know. Can you look to the right? I'm trying to get like a face scan. Apparently, JaVale McGee was in on this. Who knows? Now, before people bring this up in the comments, there have been a few times where he breaks character, like where he starts laughing. First of all, what type of dog are you owning? This is a French bulldog. And how much did it cost you to buy the dog? It's around $3,000. How much would you sell this dog for? I've never sold him. What if I stole him? Yeah, I'd fucking rip your neck off. That was an interesting encounter. Tom, you seem like you're busy. You seem like you got somewhere to be. I don't want to hold you up. You got to go spread God's message. Right, you know, I'm actually uh, probably going to be heading to uh, Hollywood Boulevard later today, uh, today and uh, I'll be helping the homeless community by giving out broken cameras. Why not working cameras? They're too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> And final thoughts, this kid reminds me of two things. There used to be a puppet with an Eastern European accent named Triumph. Lonely men who have never had sex, not even with a Catholic priest. I'm here with, uh, all right, you're dressed as a, a huge nerd, yes, yes. He would interview people, say outrageous things, throw them off. He was big for a minute. Then the fact that some people don't know that Matan is a character, that reminds me of a uh, Sasha Baron Cohen like Borat. But uh, what do you guys think of this kid? I'm out.